A letter from Stefan Marinov to Mr. Richard von Weizsäcker, President of the Federal Republic of Germany. Honorable Mr. President, on May 19, 1992 at 8 o'clock, six armed policemen burst into the home of Mr. Sivers, the director and general deputy of the Beko Craft Company. After an investigation of many hours, all the company's documents were confiscated. A month later, on June 15, Mr. Sivers was stopped in the street when a police car blocked his path. From that day, Mr. Sivers was imprisoned in a detention center in Köln. The criminal charge against Mr. Sivers was fraud. The complaint against the company Beckercraft was issued by the Statwerk Köln Service Company. Beko Craft supports research in the field of alternative energy and aims to bring alternative energy sources to the market. If such machines appear on the market, people will cut the wires leading to the electric companies and their cars will not stop at the gas stations. The reaction of the gentleman behind the scenes was therefore that all research and development of such machines must immediately stop. The motive for the accusation According to the laws of physics, building such machines is impossible. The logic of the lawsuit was very simple. The company was charging money to build machines that could never be built. Therefore, the company is deceiving. The company works with the money invested by its partners, about 30 people. Beko Craft is accused of investment fraud, but to date none of the partners has sued the company. The only plaintiff is the Cologne Service Company with whom we have nothing in common. I hope to receive your answer Mr. President, as I would like to know if Mr. Sivers will be released. With my hope and that of the other German, Stefan Marinov. Stefan's Marinov death. On 18 to 20 of August, I, Professor Pappas and Dr. Paul Le Violet visited the city of Graz to investigate the accident. We visited the University of Graz where Stefan Marinov presumably jumped off from the top of the four-level outside emergency staircase to the street. According to the librarian only one student saw Stefan actually jumping off. The name of the student is not known to us. The body of Stefan was found lying on the street below the staircase by Professor Ernst Ebermann. Stefan was not bleeding and initially Professor Ebermann thought he was sleeping there. He was still alive. Stefan left no cry. The ambulance was called and Stefan died on his way to the hospital. The bicycle with which Stefan presumably arrived there is still there. The police has made no official announcement. Apparently, they did not investigate the case obviously in depth, since the bike is still by the place of accident, locked and unnoticed. The apartment of Stefan is sealed by the police and nobody is allowed to enter, except for his son Marin Marinov, who entered for a brief time on 6 or 7 of August 1997. His belongings were not allowed to be taken and are still sealed there. Stefan left various letters typed over his typewriter and bearing his signature. The authorities of Graz refuse me to see the letters. The case of Stefan Marinov and his letters were given to the city advocate. We visited the offices of the city advocate Dr. Sprenger. But, we were refused to have any information. We strongly protested against the refusal, but, eventually, we had to leave without getting anything. No one knew or was told about the intended and assumed suicide of Stefan Marinov, even his brother who talked to him on the phone one hour before Stefan's death. Stefan had visited his son in Bulgaria 20 days before, myself in Athens 15 days before, had written a letter to me three days before, and had written letters to various other people, making appointments or suggesting various future collaborations. Ten days before Stefan's death, Stefan had made a hotel reservation for me and himself for an international physics conference to take place in Köln, Germany, on August 25, 1997. Professor P. T. Pappas, Greece.